Hey guys, so for today we're going to be talking about joints inside of Autodesk Inventor. Now this is going to be a series of videos explaining each different type of joint, so be on the lookout for the other quick videos explaining those joints. So for today we're going to be talking about the rotational joint inside of Autodesk Inventor. Again, it can definitely speed things up if you are familiar with joints. Um, so let's go ahead and dive dive right into this assembly. So take for example this lever and this face here, right? So we try to constrain these two components together. Uh, maybe if you were using the regular constraints, uh, we would use some sort of a concentric constraint, right? To constrain the pin to the hole, maybe a symmetric constraint as well, just to get the center of that. Um, so let's go see how we would do that using a joint. First things first, you will notice that everything is free to move. Uh, so of course we want to go ahead and ground one of these components. Now for me it makes the most sense to ground this base. So let's go ahead and right click on the base and ground it. So now that's fixed in space. All right, so now if we go to the assemble tab, right on top of relationships here, we see that we have joint. Right? So we're gonna select that. We get this little window, again, with two different tabs, one of them being the joint tab, the other one being the limits. Um, and then the type, right? So that's telling us what kind of type we wanna select. Like I mentioned, for today, we're gonna to be working with the rotational joint. And it's also asking us for a few selections, right? So again, it's always best practice to select the component that you want to move. Right, so in this case, we want the lever to move into this space here. So we want to make sure that we make our selection on the lever first. Right, so we hover over here, uh, zoom in a little bit, and we can see that as we're going through the lever, we get a few glyphs, right? So you have to think really a, a few steps ahead, right? So what do we want to constrain or what do we want to joint? We want to joint the center of this pin, right? So we select the center glyph to the center of this hole, right? So again, if we go over to the hole, we can hover over this hole here and we see that we have these three different glyphs to select from, right? So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky when selecting the glyphs. So what I like to do is hold control on my keyboard and that locks the glyphs in place. Now I can go ahead and select that center one and it locks it in place. Okay, so from here you can animate it again, right? If you are one of the, the people that don't like the automatic play, you can always uncheck that. And if it wasn't aligned properly, you can also align it to however you like it. In this case, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. But also notice that it's free to move into the base as well, right? So let's go ahead and apply some limits to this assembly. Right, so get it somewhat close into position, right, for now. So now if we go back to the lever, we can right click on rotational and hit edit, right? So now instead of the first joint tab, we can go to the limits tab. We can have a start, we can have an end, right? So this one we can have zero degrees. This one we can do 180. Right, and it kind of tells you which direction it's going to be heading in. Right, so if you do minus 180, it goes the other way. Right, so we hit OK. We can see that it now locks it into place. Right, so that's been working with the rotational joint inside of Autodesk Inventor. Hope that helped.